Welcome everyone. I hope that uh, today everybody's safe and healthy. Um, it's been a long time that we have not been able to see most of you. And it's, it's been a very, you know, difficult process for, I guess, the entire world during this COVID-19. So I, we, we want to thank our weekend manager, Kathy, for this amazing idea that we implemented. Because um, we thought it was a great, um, you know, initiative to be able to connect with each of you. So I want to thank you for taking the time of being here today, whether you're at home, whether you're working from home, whether you're at your workplace, taking a lunch, taking your lunch with us. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to listen what we have to say. And most important, we wanted to connect with each and every one of you, actually to see your faces. Because we miss you. We miss all our dear volunteers. You guys have no idea how uh, different it feels. The house feels so different without each of you, without your smiles, without your initiative to continue helping the mission of the Ronald McDonald House. So we have a nice um, collage here of a few of you. I mean, we could actually fill, I don't know how many PowerPoints and how many screens of the amazing and dedicated volunteers we've had throughout the years that we have established. We also wanna welcome anybody that is new to Ronald McDonald House that maybe have not been here. So this is a way to get actually connected with us. So we want to welcome each, uh, all those people as well. But before, I want to present our team. Most of you know them already, of course. Uh, but those of you who are new, I want to see, for you guys to see their faces. Well, starting with me, I'm Soraya Rivera Moya, and I'm the Executive Director for Ronald McDonald House Charities of South Florida. Um, I've been with the organization for uh, 17 years, and I'm honored to, to actually be part of this amazing organization that do so much for so many families. Next, I would like to introduce uh, Nicole Betancourt. She's our development coordinator, um, an amazing person, has so much talent. She works with me on anything related to fundraising, social media, and events. So we wanna welcome Nicole as well. Nicole? Hello everyone, Next. thank you for joining us. Next, we have our amazing house manager, Dawn Compress, which most of you have uh, contact with her uh, on a daily basis when you were coming here at the house. Uh, she has been with us uh, a year and a half and she br brings so much uh, talent and expertise when it comes to customer service. So we wanna welcome Dawn as well. Good afternoon, guys. Thank you for being on the call. We also have Elizabeth Peña, who is our front desk coordinator. And for the moment, she's assisting in our adopt -a meal program, which we're gonna be talking a little bit more about that. Uh, so we wanna welcome Elizabeth as well. Good afternoon, everyone. And of course, we cannot leave our weekend managers, our dedicated staff. They're all part-time people, but very dedicated who work on the weekends and assist in the coverage and the operations of the house. And they're part of Don's teams. We want to um, acknowledge and welcome Kathy Amador, who's on the call as well. Jerika Dawson, Gabriel Dieguez, Vicky Matthew, Shana Livasel, Osvaldo Perez, and our amazing uh, maintenance who keeps our house beautiful and does so much work, Jose Oropesa. So this is our team uh, for the moment uh, while we are going through this situation of COVID-19. So for those of you who joined just now, let me just give you a little bit of history so you guys are aware of what we do. We're an organization that was established and founded in August 13, 1982. This year, we're gonna turn 38 years old. It was actually founded through the amazing volunteers of the hospital, Jackson Memorial Hospital, and dedicated uh, McDonald's volunteer owner operators. They came up uh, with this idea of having a place for families who have sick children and they're able to stay at our facility for either was a short period of time or long period of time. So our mission is, it's very simple. We support the health and well-being of children by providing lodging meals, activities, and community of care to critically ill children and their families who need to be near a hospital for treatment. Like I said, we're on the grounds of Jackson Memorial Hospital in downtown Miami. Our 31 bedroom facility has common areas such as kitchen, uh, toddler area, play area, laundry, dining, and TV rooms. 
we assist around between 300, 350 to 400 families a year that they come from all over Florida, other states, and mostly as well international. The top medical conditions that the families come here to the Ronald McDonald House looking for the best medical care is because of organ transplant, cancer, and NICU babies, which are preemies. When it comes to uh, an organization, we want to be as transparent as possible. So we really want to show you how we function financially. Uh, this slide shows our financial positions, our revenues. And as you can see, uh, these are numbers for 2019. We pretty much raised $1.5 million, and that is this, the yellow area. The blue area is our investments. As an organization, we feel that it's important um, for any surplus to be invested in the market. So we received that revenue, which is pretty good uh, for 2019. We received those amounts. Um, in terms of uh, guest donations, uh, we receive around $38,000. And those are the contributions that our guests made. Whatever amount that they would like to contribute, that's the amount that um, we actually put that on the financials, even though we don't really look at it that much. And then we have a smaller amount of $13,000 in other contributions. When it comes to our expenses, this is very important for any donor to actually evaluate when they decide to give to an organization. So we're proud to say that um, $1.1 million is actually goes to the program. When I say the program, it goes directly to support the Ronald McDonald House facility and its families. Uh, the green portion is the fundraising expenses. That means fundraising when it comes to events uh, that we are able to raise funds. And then in red is the administration, uh, which is uh, management. Um, if you look at that, that pretty much shows that from every dollar we raise, 70 cents goes to the program. And that's very important for any organization to explain and show that uh, because it really goes to the mission itself instead of going to administration expenses, which some other charities actually have that higher. Maybe they're doing some sort of research, uh, medical research, um, and that might be the issue of that. But if you want to look for more information about us as well, you can visit charitynavigator.org and you'll be able to see more in detail when it comes to our financials. And again, all this information is also on our website. So what happened with, uh, with uh, COVID-19? Of course, this changed the world in every aspect. This changed our lives. And it also changed the way we function at the Ronald McDonald House. So what happened when the city decided that we, everybody had to be in quarantine? Of course, that affected us as well. And on March 16, we decided, or our corporate office decided that globally, all the Ronald McDonald houses could not admit any more families. So imagine the stress of the parents just dealing with their child's condition, that this comes on top of that. That maybe, you know, they were going to the hospital, they don't know if they could get actually infected there. So it's very stressful. So that's why that decision had to be made in order to be an organization that responsibly didn't want to this virus to get spread out. And because of that, our programs were all canceled. We started with first our volunteer program. We could not receive, unfortunately, any more volunteers inside our facility. Um, our healthy hour program, which is directed to our families and generally sponsored by uh, Florida Blue and TJ Maxx, which we were providing yoga classes, um, cooking classes and other some sorts of activities for the families had to be put on hold as well our house tours. This was an initiative that we started back in January and we had to put it on hold. Our transportation program for our families as well had to be put on hold where we would take them to the supermarket and maybe any other errands. Our Tabathon contest, which we collect soda tabs of the cans to assist the charity. We have a contest with all elementary schools also had to be put on hold. And the changes to the adopt a meal program, which is such an essential program to assist our families by just providing a home cooked meal also had to be put on hold. But the reality is that we never close our doors. We, as we continue to assist less families for the moment. Um, but the reality is that our staff is still here. And we decide, our board decided that closing the doors would not be effective for especially the international families because they were, had no place to go. They would have to go to a hotel and it was not convenient for them to go from a hotel to the hospital, which, which we're here right on the grounds. So again, we decided not to do that. 
Our events also had to be canceled. We had uh, three events scheduled during that time period, actually the second quarter of uh, 2020, our 28th annual 12 Women Luncheon, which we honor men who do philanthropic work in the community, was scheduled for a April 30th at the Crow Gables Country Club. And also our Fisherama, Fisherama Tournament, scheduled for June 6th in Isla Morada in the Keys, also had to be put on hold. And we also had a few other third party fundraisers actually initiated by dedicated volunteers that also had to be canceled. So all this situation really put us in a very difficult position uh, when it comes to not only operations, but also in fundraising. But one of the things that we wanna do is still celebrate volunteers. And because um, we have a program that we honor on a monthly basis, dedicated people, it could be individuals, groups, or actually churches, uh, students, etc. But we want to recognize those volunteers that unfortunately they're not able to see themselves in our famous wall of fame here at the Ronald McDonald House, but we want to recognize them. So we want to start by recognizing our volunteer of the month for March, which is Isabel Briseño. She has been coming to the house, I would say, for the past five or six years. She comes on a monthly basis to do haircuts for the parents, the kids, and also provides meals. So we want to recognize Isabel for being our volunteer of the month for the month of March. For the month of April, our volunteer of the month was Stanley and Bailey Fine, which actually they're on the, on the webinar right now. We want to recognize them for all the things that they have done for us, not only on the clerical, but organizing the house in many areas, our closets, um, our pantry, and also being an adopt -a meal participant. Thank you, Stanley and Bailey. For the month of May, we had Suzanne Meltzer. Uh, she, ever since COVID started, um, she has always been in constant communication with uh, Elizabeth on the adopt -a meal program. She was actually one of our most important champions during this time to make sure that the families were fed. Um, and that was very important for us. So we felt that Suzanne really deserved to be volunteer of the month for the month of May. And also her husband uh, was actually honored as one of our 12 good men two years ago. Um, so they have been actively involved for the Ronald McDonald House for several years. For the month of June, we wanted to recognize our friends from the Florida Marlins, the Home Plate Meals. They initiated uh, this program by providing meals to different nonprofits organizations throughout the community. And we're happy to say that they provided us around 200 meals, I believe it was. Uh, for our families, so we wanted to recognize them for the month of June. And the Florida Marlins have been very supportive of our chapter for many, many years as well. For the month of July, we're going a little bit ahead of the game. We wanted to recognize our dedicated volunteers from the Little Lighthouse Foundation. They come to the Ronald McDonald House twice a month and provide delicious meals for our families. They have been actually supporting the Ronald McDonald House for the last 10 years. So we felt it was important to recognize them as well. So again, this is a program that we do on a monthly basis and we try to recognize everybody, but it's so difficult. And uh, we also highlight them on our social media channels. And again, on our wall of fame here at the Ronald McDonald House. So thank you to each and every one of these uh, groups and individuals. And we'll continue to honor as many more in the future. Now I'm gonna turn it to Dawn so she can give a little bit more information about how our house operations and the different programs. Take it over, Don. Okay, um, I think though um, we have some people waiting in the waiting room, Soraya. Okay, there, now I can hear you. Thank you for letting me in. Thank All right. You. Good afternoon, guys. Uh, my name is Dawn. Um, as introduced earlier, I am the house manager. I'm just going to update you on some of the things happening around the house. Next slide. So this, guys, is the Joseph family. They're here from the Bahamas. Um, 
This is Alfred pictured with his daughter, Mia, and, and the wife, Hermana, is also here at the house. Um, they've been here since September of 2019. Um, what brought them here was uh, a premature birth, um, brought them to the house. They are very, very grateful for all the services that um, we do here at the house. Um, so we're going to show you a little video clip um, about the family's journey. Go ahead, Soraya. You know, uh, she is approximately 11 pounds now, and you know she has she has a little challenges. You know, she has some uh, blood transfusion uh, seizures, and she has. Um, I remember we were dealing with her vision. You know, you know her vision wasn't too clear, but now it's. Developing, and then she has this thing, you know, this scientific name. It's called laryngomalacia. It was a long name, where you know her voice box, so she strides, so when she breathes, she sounds like she's snoring sometimes. I knew that our daughter was going to be in the NICU for a while. The thought of having not having a place to stay is very stressful. Uh, and not being close to your daughter when she was in Nick is very stressful. So what my daughter did, it provided us the opportunity to be able to be close range to where our daughter was with the coronavirus. We were also concerned because we, we knew that the impact and the effect that it was having in the world. And then even here, I'm sure my daughter my wanted to protect all the residents and everything, so we were not sure where we would go, but graciously to God, we're still here, and I'm grateful that they're still open. I brag about this place to my friends and families when they ask me, so, are you okay? Why are you staying? You know, I, is it okay? And I'm like, I always brag about this place because we feel very safe here. I mean, uh, we haven't had to worry about food, really being taken, well taken care of here, being here. And so it's really been a blessing, and we're really grateful for this place. I mean, thank you for those who give in and those who are continue to give. But I do want to ask if you want to support it on my down house, there are plenty of ways to give, no matter how big it is, how small it is, just give because giving goes a long way. Okay, so what this slide represents is pretty much what's been happening um, January through May. So when this all started on um, March 16th, when we were 65% occupied, and when we had served 73 families. During that time, um, on March 16th, when I came to work that day, I had to notify six more families that were scheduled to come that week to cancel their stay, unfortunately, um, because of the whole COVID situation. March 10th, you know, March, we had 10 people check out. April, we had seven families check out. And May, we had uh, two families check out, leaving us with our current situation of three families um, that are here um, internationally that really didn't have a place to go home. We um, to currently house three families um, at hotels um, as well, and we continue to provide essential goods um, for these families. When the families uh, checked out prior also, we sent them home with essential goods um, to take the burden off of the families of not having to worry about going to the grocery store. You know, we gave them public gift cards, um, toilet paper, any essential goods so they didn't, initially didn't have to think about um, going to the grocery store. Um, the meals provided, um, we did 144 meals. Um, over the last few months, which averaged two meals per day, again, to take the stress off of the, the families, um, thinking about, you know, where to go buy food or the money situation. The average length of stay for the families was 23 days. 
um, fundraising. So we were able to um, get um, $14,277 um, donated for our adopt -a meal program to help us provide meals for our families. We got $86,807 um, of in-kind donations, which basically consisted of gift cards, wish list items, different services provided around the house, also essential items donated to the house. Next slide, please. So during the time, I mean, we kept busy at the house. Um, the first thing we did was we went to every single room and we did maintenance checks. We checked for painting, water pressure, AC vents, cleaning, um, lights, anything, flush toilets, just to make sure that um, we would be, be ready to receive families once again. Grout cleaning, um, we had a grout cleaning was donated by a company called Classic Commercial Services. Um, they do donated grout cleaning for the entire house. Um, bedroom items and kitchen items were generously donated. You'll see a picture here um, from Ikea. Um, donation of masks. So when this all started, the first three weeks or so, um, masks were donated by the hospital, um, which was a, a big relief to all of us because at the time we didn't know if we would have enough masks for our staff and our family. So that was a big relief for us to receive masks. And then since then, I mean, many, many donors have donated masks, gloves, and other disinfectant um, products to the house, um, which have been super, super helpful. Um, we had new computers donated from our friends at Dell. Um, again, so our families will be able to um, use the latest technology um, when we come back um, to business. Next slide. So this slide um, shows um, our current wish list. So right now, you know, the main thing is gift cards from Publix, Walmart, Amazon, and Winn-Dixie. Um, we're always looking for that. Um, to help out our families here and we could purchase items for the house as well. Individual snacks, as you know, you know, everything now needs to be individually wrapped. Disposable gloves, masks, uh, disinfecting wipes and alarm clocks um, are also some, um, things needed for the house right now. Right now with all the COVID situation, we've had to update um, several of our documents. So we're looking for somebody who can do translation um, to Spanish um, for these documents. If you have any questions or concerns about anything with the uh, current wish list here, uh, my email is right there on the screen. Please feel free um, to email um, and I'll be happy to um, assist you guys and thank you guys. Next slide. So this slide is um, where every, you can find also the RMHC um, wish list on Amazon. Um, on Walmart, um, there's the, the name and the last name to so go ahead and check out that link. Um, if you have somebody that goes to school and is looking for volunteer hours, I mean, there's a way, you know, that you could get the volunteer hours and help out the Ronald McDonald House. Um, for every $20 spent, RMH will um, award 20 hours and $30 for 20, for 20 hours. Um, if current needs, you can also be found on our website. Um, it's right there um, for further information. But again, feel free to reach out. Um, to me, and I'll be happy to um, answer any questions. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Elizabeth. But before I do, um, please um, continue to chat in your questions in the chat box so we can get to them um, accordingly. I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth, who's been doing a fantastic job taking care of our adopt -a meal program. Hi everyone. Um, first of all, I, I would like to thank all of you guys. I did notice some of you, um, I finally put a face to the names uh, of the people that have been contacting me regarding the Adopt a Meal program. And I would just like to thank all of you on behalf of the families, how much we truly appreciate everything that you've done, your efforts, your, your dedication, to be able to provide our families with meals that they don't have to worry about where the next meal will be coming from. Um, and if you, if you would like, okay, so the adopt a meal program, the part, your participation ensures a warm and delicious meal for our families. Um, currently, uh, with, with the COVID-19 situation, 
as many of you know, we are, the way the adopt a meal program is working right now is uh, you are going to be um, d using a delivery or catering from any of the local restaurants that we have here in Miami, um, just as well to be able to, to help our, our local restaurants and to be able to give families that those meals um, just because we can't receive, we're not able to receive our volunteers in the house right now. Um, so if you would like, uh, next slide, please. The next slide, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so for any of you that, that are on this call and have yet to participate or or have any questions on how to participate, you can visit our website at RMHC South Florida and click on the tab that says get involved. And um, so you select a date on the online calendar and RMA, you will receive a confirmation email via uh, RMHC. I would also like to let you know that we have a list of selected restaurants or catered businesses that are working with us currently. Um, uh, that they're working with us at a reduced price to provide meals to the families at a reduced price. I did want to mention um, if you've had a previously scheduled meal or activity, those of you that would do activities such as baking with the families or a karaoke night, um, we would in we'd like to encourage you to consider uh, shifting your activity to an adopt a meal um, activity and um, we just once again we do have a restaurant contact list of local restaurants uh, who have joined our efforts to provide the families with meals at a lower cost and also if any of you are um, have contacts with restaurants who would be willing to work with us uh, please feel free to shoot me an email um, and I'll answer uh, as soon as possible to be able to have that contact list um, as updated as possible. Uh, so once again, thank you all for all the um, efforts that you have done. Believe me, it's been uh, something awe-inspiring, especially for me on, on behalf of the one that's been receiving all the emails, the one that's been uh, trying to coordinate with all of you for these, these adopt the meals I do want to say um, we are, Suzanne um, did email me um, regarding if we need help with our adopt the meals this month and next month. Uh, we do still need help. So if you would like to continue supporting us, uh, the calendar is, is on our website. And I look forward to have, uh, having contact with you and sending that email, that online confirmation. Um, so I hope to hear from all of you soon. So once again, thank you. So fundraising, uh, which uh, myself and Nicole will be talking a little bit about that. So as COVID-19 started, um, back in March, you know, the whole situation uh, really changed everything. And, you know, as of right now, it's still going to be a challenge and will be a challenge from now till the end of uh, the year. Um, so our chapter had to strategize and rethink of ways to continue raising funds to keep our doors open. And the reason we're doing this uh, is because of course, we're gonna be able to admit more families in the near future maybe in the next couple of weeks. Uh, right now, because our, the numbers of COVID continue to increase, we were not allowed to reopen, but I think probably within the next week or two weeks or so, we might be able to at least bring a few more families because they really need the assistance. So I just wanna give uh, a couple of statistics um, based on the Association of Fundraising uh, Professionals. And that is that according to a national survey, more than half of the charities are expecting to raise less money in 2020, and some believe still in 2021. However, the Human Services Organization, which is what the category we fall in, um, is expected to actually maybe increase some dollars because it's such an essential service. 
So we're going to do the best way possible to be able to at least, uh, you know, raise the funds that are needed to continue uh, assisting our families. And if anybody has any great idea besides what we're going to be presenting today, feel free to chat something on the box. Uh, on July 1st, actually next week, Wednesday, we're going to launch uh, kind of like a new campaign, sort of like, you know, taking step by step this whole process of assisting more families as they come to our facility. So be on the lookout for that, especially on uh, the social media channels, maybe an email you'll be receiving as well. Uh, but here's some ideas that we want to share with you. Everybody can mute their phones or computers, please. Thank you. We're going to start with a peer-to-peer -peer program, and I'm going to hand it out to Nicole so she can explain a little bit more how this works out. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, once again, we just want to make sure that everybody can mute your phone or your um, computer. So peer-to-peer um, -peer is a simple and um, easy virtual way to um, engage our volunteers and donors to give back to the house. Uh, it's completely contactless. If any of you are familiar with um, GoFundMe pages or even Facebook fundraisers, we have um, an RNHC peer-to-peer -peer, uh, program that gives directly to the house. So we're currently encouraging um, you know, our volunteers and our donors to go ahead and, and and start a peer to peer fundraiser, whether it's in honor of your birthday or a wedding in lieu of gifts. Um, if you want to do a virtual walkathon or in honor of someone, um, you know, you can create a peer to peer. It's very simple and it's very personal. Uh, you will be able to customize a picture. You can write uh, the reason for it and you then it'll create a special link for you to then share on social media, um, through mobile, however you'd like. It's very easy to share it and then people can then donate directly any amount they'd like to your personal fundraiser. Um, we also have the option for you to um, create these fundraisers for different types of programs that we have here at the house. So Soraya, if you can go to the next slide. Um, here's an example of um, a personal fundraiser that was most recently done, uh, which was done by our house manager, Dawn. She, uh, obviously with everything going on, we wanted to make sure that we had brand new clean comforters for all our families. So uh, we needed 40 comforters. And so we decided uh, that it'd be a good idea to start this peer to peer. So she created it, um, the total amount to by the 40 comforters was $1,284. And so she shared that personal link on her Facebook with her friends and she asked um, donors to please uh, donate and help fundraise that exact amount so that we can buy those 40 comforters. Um, if you can go to the next slide, you can see what that fundraiser looks like. Um, there it is. And as you can see, there's a little green bar there. That's your thermometer. So you'll be able to see the status of your personal fundraiser. Uh, if you see right below, um, you couldn't see that text right there is something that she customized and explained the reason why she did that fundraiser, uh, which was to raise that funds for the comforters. I'm sorry. And uh, she put her own picture. So you're able to customize all of that. Um, and then you can just share it with your friends and you'll be able to see the list of all the donors who are donating. Uh, we've also had volunteers make personal fundraisers to raise funds for us to buy meals for the families because as you know, uh, we haven't been able to take in our volunteers as we usually do. So instead they're raising funds so that we can then buy uh, meals. Um, so you can also do that. It's a great idea. Um, you can also do one for our share and program. Uh, which is to cover nights for our families. So as you know, um, it we ask for an optional $20 a night donation for our families to stay at RMHC. If they are unable to pay, we never turn families down, uh, but that's when we turn to our community. So if you'd like to cover certain nights and certain stays for our families, you can create a peer-to-peer -peer, um, and ask for a $20 donation from your friends and um, that will all go towards covering the stays. So it's another great idea. If you guys have any more questions about this, you're more than welcome to reach out to me directly um, and I can help you set it up, but it's pretty simple. 
and um, it'll definitely get you involved and it's virtual. So that's the best part. Thank you, Nicole. We also want to emphasize that this is something similar to like what you have on Facebook where you celebrate your birthday. But the reality is that when you do it on Facebook, there's certain fees that are taken out before the funds come to us. So this is our, this is our own virtual fundraising platform that we have here at RMEC. Thank you, Nicole. So we're gonna go with uh, other ways to help. We have different ones um, that we're gonna go over one by one. So we'll start with pop tabs, Nicole. Yes, so the pop tabs. The pop tabs is one of the most fun um, ways to collect and give back to RMHC um, and really for all ages. So I know that there's a lot of kids at home now, especially during the summer. Um, so this is one way that kids can virtually volunteer for the house. And it's by collecting the aluminum tabs from cans, um, whether it be soda or food, it could be vegetable cans, however. Um, we encourage always for you to create your own um, collecting container. So whether it be a, you know, a gallon of milk or a cardboard box, um, we encourage kids to get creative and their little collectors and start collecting those tabs. Um, if you bring them over to the house, we will be here um, to receive them. And then we then take those pop tabs to our recycling center. And then in turn, we get those um, funds directly towards operations. So it's a win-win, it's fun. Um, and yeah, we encourage um, a lot of groups. If you have any questions on that, again, you're more than welcome to reach out to us. But it's something you can start doing little by little, um, you know, from now till the end of the year, but it's a lot of fun. Um, and again, we really encourage kids because this is one way for them to understand and for them to give back. Uh, we also have those adorable little houses that if anyone is interested, you're more than welcome to pick them up, um, which you can take home or you can make your own, like I said. Thank you, Nicole. Next, it's very easy. I guess, who doesn't go to McDonald's? So McDonald's, as our founding partner, um, has created these different programs to support their favorite charity, which is us, Ronald McDonald House, Charities of South Florida. And first, we want to say that the first thing you can do to help the charity is donate your spare change at the donation boxes located on the drive through or on the lobby. Um, your spare change really makes a big difference. Second, every time somebody purchases a Happy Meal, one cent supports Ronald McDonald House Charities. On an annual basis, we receive around $90,000 on the Happy Meal program, which is very, very successful. And the third one, which is something we implemented actually last year, is round up your purchase. Every time you go to McDonald's, you can ask um, the employee to round your purchase to the next dollar, and you'll be able to see it, whether it's cash donation, you tell them to round up to the next dollar, you're able to see that in your receipt, or if you do your purchase through a debit or credit card. So feel free to do that. I mean, McDonald's really never stopped uh, their services during COVID-19 especially they have through the drive through So this is a really easy way to support the charity by just going to McDonald's and have your favorite meal, snack, Sunday, coffee, whatever you feel like. Nicole? Yes, so Amazon Smile. Amazon Smile is another very simple way uh, for us all to give back to RMHC. Um, who doesn't shop on Amazon nowadays, especially with everything going on? Um, you know, delivery has been our best option. And with shops being closed, um, I know we've turned to delivery. So Amazon Smile is basically Amazon's uh, charity domain. So it's just like amazon.com. And so all you have to do is go on smile.amazon.com. Um, and then you can choose a charity of your choice. Um, so you can choose directly RMHC of South Florida. Uh, it's a very easy and simple thing to do and to set up. Once you go on smile.amazon.com, uh, it'll tell you select your charity. You have to type in Ronald McDonald House Charities of South Florida. Once you select us, um, every single item or um, purchase that you make on, on smile.amazon.com, 0.5% um, of your purchase will then come to the house. Um, we shop often on Amazon um, for many things throughout the year. So those little, um, you know, dollars that do get taken out of those purchases um, really do accumulate and they make a huge difference. 
rooms for the house. So I encourage you all to go ahead and try it out. Um, I will say though that um, if you shop on amazon.com normally, um, or on your Prime account, it won't count. You do have to be signed into smile.amazon.com. And keep in mind that is it is the same exact shopping experience. Uh, there's nothing different about it. It's very similar. Uh, the only difference is that it is just their Smile account. Um, and you can save it on your phone. Uh, you can bookmark it on your computer and it'll be easy and it'll come straight to us. If anyone has any questions also, you feel free to let us know. Great. Another program that we have, and we have implemented this for the last two years, is that we have partnered with CharityDine.com. CharityDine is a site that you'll be able to enjoy discounts of different restaurants, of your favorite restaurants, and the Ronald McDonald House receive 15% of that certificate of that certificate purchase comes to us. All you have to do is visit CharityDine.com, and you're going to be able to see all the restaurants there. Uh, definitely those um, gift cards are, are very heavily discounted. Sometimes you might be able to purchase um, a gift card for $20 and the meal is for $40. So I encourage each and every one of you to see that list and be able to select any of the restaurants uh, participating all over South Florida. It's a very simple way to support a charity and every day, to be honest with you, I swear, every day we receive people that purchase the certificates now that all the restaurants are come back to open for businesses and we receive uh, donations, smaller donations every day, a dollar here and a dollar there, 50 cents. And again, it really makes a big difference. So I encourage you to visit that and take a browse of uh, the fabulous restaurants that we have to enjoy in our cities. Alrighty, and this is another very easy and quick way to help out the house. Um, and it's basically to donate uh, your vehicle or a vehicle that you um, are thinking of possibly uh, getting rid of or selling. Basically, it's it's simple. Um, right there, we've included the link to the sites. There's also a phone number that we can share with you all if you're interested. And basically what they'll do is they'll tow your vehicle for free. Um, and then they will auction the vehicle and the obviously the highest um, attracting um, sale price is the one that's going to then come straight to RMHC. So um, they will then send you a, a tax receipt um, and then we receive the proceeds. So it's a win-win here um, and you can really make a difference. The other thing that you can do is when you renew your driver's license or your car tag um, and you're a Florida resident, um, you can choose RMHC of South Florida as a recipient of a donation. So usually it'll ask you if you'd like to donate a dollar. You do have the option to donate any other amount if you'd like. So uh, we included the link right there. You go to www.gorenew.com. So when you're ready, remember to think of RMHC of South Florida and um, you can make a little donation there. And like I said, a little goes a long way. Um, at the end of the year, we will receive those funds. So. Yes, if anyone has any questions, again, let us know. And again, you can do that uh, via online or you can renew your driver's license tag in the mail as well. So when you receive it in the mail, look on the back portion of your stuff and you're gonna be able to select the charity, of course, Ronald McDonald House, please, and then mail it out to the state and then you receive your tag. Thank you, Nicole. And the last program that we wanted to promote, which actually, you know, some of you work in different corporations, some of you might be part of a civic group, um, of a law firm, of an accounting firm. Um, and we have a great program here for corporations, even though we've had uh, individuals that have also participated in this, and it's the Adopt a Room program. It's an opportunity for donors to sponsor a specific area to be furnished at keep and keep in tip top condition here at the Ronald McDonald House. Again, any business individual or civic group can participate. Right now, for the moment, we have these areas available. The private rooms, we have six available at $3,000. The semi-private rooms, we have 10 available for $1,500. The family room on the first floor, we have it for 5,000. And then the patio and garden area, we have it also for 5,000. 
we actually, what we do is we put a recognition plaque outside and it is gonna stay there for several years. Um, and as you can see from the photo, right there is our corporate donor from Walgreens. They adopted several rooms um, last year and that was their recognition that we gave to them that day. So again, this is something more on the corporate side, but if anybody's interested, feel free to, to let us know. So this is uh, Nicole's and myself email address, just in case for any questions related to the fundraising programs that we just described and we talk about. Um, so this is our email. So again, we're so grateful for all the volunteers that have been part of our history, that have been part of uh, everything that we have done throughout this year. And actually most important now, uh, the charity could not do what we do without each and every one of you with your initiative, with your ideas, with your enthusiasm to continue assisting more families. And now more than ever, we need everybody's help to make all this possible. I know these are gonna, you know, these are hard times, but I think that we'll, we'll survive this. We're gonna do it all together, you know, little by little. Um, and again, remember, no matter how small, how big, how often you support the charity, it will always, always be appreciated. Um, myself and the entire staff will be forever grateful, again, no matter how you get involved with our organization. And again, you know, I just want to leave this quote here. You know, nothing liberates our grandness like the desire to help, the desire to serve. Um, I think it's something very important to understand that, you know, serving others, it just fills your heart. It really does. It makes you a better person. It makes you um, realize, you know, how blessed you are, what you have in your life, and to help others, it makes it more meaningful. Um, so the art here that says, the heart of a volunteer is not measured in size, but by the depth of their commitment to make the difference in the lives of others. This was actually a sign that we created for a volunteer appreciation many years ago. And I really kept it because it really means, it means a lot to us. Make sure you continue to be connected with us on our social media channels, on Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, and actually YouTube as well. Make sure to follow us if you're not doing that. And every week we have something to post on our wish list Wednesday and take a look on the maybe Fun Fact Friday. We have so many information to share with you, great news. Uh, we wanna highlight your contributions and your support to the charity. So uh, again, keep in communication with us. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you again for your time. Um, and we're going to be able to answer some of the questions, if anybody has one, to be able to have them on the chat box. So if anybody has questions right now, feel free to post them there and we'll be able to answer them um, as soon as possible. Let's see we have. Uh, hi, Soraya. Uh, Sarah, yes. a couple of questions came up earlier. Um, one was about the community service. So the clarification for community service hours for school is $20 um, worth of goods for 10 hours of service and $30 for 20 hours. So we wanted to uh, re-clarify that. Sure. Another question that came up is, uh, someone asked if we're not open, like where, the, where are the families going to be going um, if we're not open? I did um, to say that we do have a hotel partner that we've been working with who's been giving uh, the families a $40 rate um, to help out the family. So whenever somebody does call, for the Ronald McDonald House. Unfortunately, we can't um, accept any families at the moment, but we do send them the information so they still have a, a place to stay close by to the hospital. Well, those were the two and questions you know, I wanted I to, that came through. Sure, and I wanted to clarify that also, that even though we're not accepting families, remember, we work very closely with the social workers at the hospital and they have resources available for families as well. Maybe a particular family has partnered with a specific foundation and they're able to fund the hotel state. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're coming out of their pockets. So there's a lot of resources out there for the different families through like example, American Cancer Society. Um, sometimes even their medical plan has, is able to actually fund their hospital state. So um, we wanna make sure that those families are taken care of one way or the other. Um, we feel very bad, believe us, that we're not able to assist them. But if they're referred to a hotel, there's other ways that we can support them, like Don said and mentioned before about the meals program, gift cards. So we, you know, we we're still doing our part to be able to see it as much as possible the way that we're able to. 
Any other questions? So again, we're getting ready to, to accept more families. And that's why we wanted to connect to each and every one of you. The reality is that right now, and for phase one or maybe phase two, we might not be able to receive volunteers here physically. That's why we wanted to connect with you this way, so you can be informed of what's happening at the house. Um, and again, you are our ambassadors out there. You are our voice, maybe. You might have a connection with uh, somebody that owns a restaurant. Maybe you have a connection of somebody that might be able to provide um, some of the gift cards that are needed, or some of the items that Don mentioned before. Or maybe it's just yourself asking your friends to raise funds through the peer-to-peer -peer program. Um, so we have a lot of options for you to be able to engage at some way. Um, and we just want to thank you for it. We want to thank you for it. And again, all our information is on the slides. And again, you can contact us uh, maybe on via phone, 305-324-5683, and reach out to any of us in the team. And, uh, and also, if you have any ideas that are not basically here on this program, maybe you have another idea to do maybe a virtual event that we might have not think about it. Um, we're more than welcome to accept your ideas because we know how important the charity means to each and every one of you and how important it is to continue supporting the families with sick children. 